We're going to bring on our next guest, uh, Norman Finkelstein, whose book, whose recent book, um, I'll Burn That Bridge When I Get to It, Heretical Thoughts on Identity Politics, Cancel Culture, and Academic Freedom, deals with a lot of these issues that we're discussing. Norman, welcome. Thank you for having me, and I enjoyed listening to uh, Robin and Barbara. We all had kind of an assignment where we where. Uh, we all read, I've, not each other's works, because I don't have any works, but we all read um, some of Robin's work, Norman's book, and uh, Barbara's interventions. And again, I'll, I'll link to all, uh, all the, well, I can't link to all of them because they're too many, but I'll link to some of your guys' uh, extensive uh, bibliography. But let's just start, I mean, what, Norman, do you want to respond to some of the things that you heard in this discussion? Or so I'm going to just say a couple of things. And uh, it's in the spirit of trying to have an honest conversation and not and not just have bromides feel goods and uh, to really engage with each other. Let me begin by saying I'm not at all an expert. I'm not even a novice in most of these fields that you have discussed. I've had, a, for various reasons, I ended up special, hyper-specializing in a couple of topics in my adult life. And uh, that was to the detriment of many other things I wish I had time to explore, but I didn't. On the other hand, I think there's a kind of what you might call a minimal uh, mental competence such that you can go into areas where you don't know a lot, but nonetheless apply basic reasoning, basic uh, um, looking for basic coherence, things like that, apply those ordinary standards and reach a conclusion about whether something you're reading is coherent or not, whether it's compelling or not, whether it's convincing or not. There, I think, um, mo an, what you could call an educated reader can reach conclusions even, even in the absence of having steeped themselves in the scholarly literature. So having said that, uh, let me just address a couple of things I heard you say. And uh, as I say, I'm gonna be candid, but absolutely respectful. You know, when I hear you talk about your history, I respect that. That's a, that's a, that's a life. It's a, a, a good life, in my opinion, and a life deserving of respect and honor. Um, so I hope you'll take my comments with that uh, sentiment in mind. I'll deal with two things. I'll start with one, and then we'll move to the second. The question of the Af African-American uh, AP course curriculum. I was following the news on it. I sat down and I read it. It's about, I think, 224 pages. I read it carefully. I'm not an expert in the field, but I was curious what topics did it cover, what topics did it exclude? So it begins with Africa, and basically it's a kind of restorative depiction of Africa having been so maligned, the emphasis in the African section is, uh, I think, fairly, uh, it's uh, the achievements of Africa, the fact that empires existed there, and all sorts of things which, even in this present day, most people don't know, and even if they do know, it goes in one ear and out the other because of all the propaganda, the imagery, and so forth. Okay. It then goes to slavery, uh, goes to the... Uh, the, um, uh, the slave trade, slavery, goes through reconstruction, uh, goes through pre-Civil War, Civil War, uh, reconstruction, uh, civil rights movement, black power movement. So in terms of general themes, it seemed to have covered the terrain that one would expect in an African-American studies curriculum. I would say it gives over, we can disagree, but I'm going to say it nonetheless, it gives over super abundant space to contributions of women. I would say there is not a single page in that curriculum, not a single page, and I would say estimate, I don't have it in front of me now, I would estimate about 20% of the sections 20% of the sections are on African-American women. 
So the idea that it somehow excludes the female or women contribution, I'm not saying you say it, I'm just trying to give a picture of that curriculum. I would say that claim would not be true. Okay, can uh, I jump in here? Because 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 yeah. you're gonna you're taking a lot of time to to say this. Can I just respond to this? Because I read every page of that curriculum, and there are two things to keep in mind. One is not the course wasn't supposed to be an African American history course. It became that it was an African American studies course, which is to say, it was interdisciplinary. And so much of what was taken out wasn't just history, but it was framing. It was theoretical interventions. Number one. And number two, let's just say it's a glorified history course. That's fine. But if we, do we really want to play the game of, of percentages? It, it, even if we do play the game of percentages, 20% in terms of the centrality of Black women, that doesn't really said, make sense. Sections. Well, but, but, but you don't need special sections because... I, and I, look, I, and I'm saying that I'm not, even, I'm not even arguing that DeSantis had anything to do with that. I'm saying that the way that a lot of us, I can speak for myself, I teach African-American history. Uh, and so the texts that I use as my major texts are usually texts that center on uh, Black women as the, as the major text, not as a supplement, supplementary text. You know? And there's lots of reasons for that. You can't think about something like, like slavery without thinking about reproduction. You, know? you can't think about... The, you know, we, we talk about the, the, the late 19th century and the period of Booker T. Washington debates the boys, when that's not the fundamental question. The fundamental question is you have these black women's organizations that are fighting lynching, you know, and that are actually post-reconstruction organizations that are, you know, resisting segregation in a way. Some are elite, some are working class, you know. Um, so there's a lot of things that, that, that really, if we really want to be serious about trying to tell this history, as history, there's no way we can have separate sections on black women alone and it constitute one fifth when it should be more than half. I don't think there's a single page that doesn't mention black women. And then I said, in addition to that, there are whole sections given over to black women. Now, you said it's an Afro-American studies course, not an African-American history course. It happens, and I'm sure you'll agree that I think an excessive amount of space is given over to Black culture, music, art, photography, many references to Black hair, so it's more, in my opinion, in a black history course, I would have liked to see something on the black working class. There is one section entitled the growth of the black middle class. There is virtually nothing in that curriculum about the black working class. I found that very troubling. I saw nothing in that curriculum about issues of black health, nothing in that curriculum except for one tiny section on the 1930s, nothing on black housing, nothing on black employment. And so when I read this in curriculum, my thought was, it was an awful lot of black middle-class professors who wrote this curriculum. Now of the advisory board and the contributors, there are 13. Of those 13, 12 are black. So I have to assume they had some input. There was one white person whose specialization is African, his, uh, African history. Apart from that, so, if you were to ask me what's the problem with that curriculum, I would say the problem is it's way too woke, way too woke. There is a section on black power followed by a section on the Black Panthers. This is kind of like a professional black middle class look at the past. 
I would have liked to see something on Bob Moses, something on Diane Nash, something on Ella Baker. That I think yeah. would have been interesting. Can, can, can I, I want to interrupt. Oh, there you go. Great. <laughs> so, go interrupt. Yeah. Uh, what I want to say is that there's nobody talking right now who created this course. So, what we would like to see, Robin and I talked about. I think we were mostly focusing on the issue of censorship and suppression of, of subject matter about people of African heritage living in the United States. That's what concerns me about it. I have it downloaded on my computer too, but unlike the two of you, I haven't read every page of it. But like the, the things that you're saying are missing, I don't have any problems with uh, Norman with what you're saying is missing from this uh, curriculum. The fact that you're saying that black middle-class people created it, who gets to be college professors at right. that? Yeah. You know, I mean, we're not going to our state prisons where the geniuses are. We're not going to our state prison where the geniuses are to ask them, would you mind, you know, in your spare time here as you're being incarcerated, uh, developing some course courses for advanced placement, right. you know, uh, African-American history. That's not how these things happen. So, what we have is a product of, you know, the college board, the corporation. The, I, I never knew it was a billion dollar corporation until now. That is until this period. I knew it before uh, we started our conversation today. But the thing is that what we have is a kind of approach and the kind of content that would happen if you created this problem or not this problem. I'm sorry. If you created this project under racial capitalism, mm -hmm. who would be invited who would be qualified, who would get asked. Now, as I said, to me, the most important thing is that there's certain states and state governments and leaders of states who wish to be president, who wish to erase all of this material, right, wrong, class conscious, gender conscious, race conscious, you name it, they want to get rid of it. To me, getting rid of uh, Black uh, feminists or Black women's literary uh, work that's my baby because I went mm -hmm. to grad school in literature. That's a specific field I went in and saw the development of uh, African American literature and Black women writers, you know, a trajectory, you know, uh, through uh, the years. So that concerns me. I think we miss, if it's not there, we missed a really great uh, historical record. And mm -hmm. also, uh, we, we miss. Uh, some analytical, you know, some analytical tools that would be useful. It also bothers me that queer studies uh, and queer theory went out because quiet as it's kept, a lot of the greatness of African-American politics, culture, social, you name it, mm -hmm. you name it, what queer people were involved, right. often uh, closeted. So, I, I, I mean, as I said, we didn't create it. I don't know if right. we should argue yeah, about it. And, and I'm not, we're not here to defend it. <laughs> that wasn't the point at all. And, I, and, I and to, to, as, a, as a factual matter, it mentions Black lesbians felt excluded from the civil rights movement. It mentions that Bayard Rustin was gay. It mentions not extensively, but it's there. And we should have an accurate representation of what we're talking about, because then people are going to just accuse those who are critical of the curriculum of being propagandists. We have to be honest about those things. It was very clear on Bayard Rustin. Now, I thought it should have been clearer on the, Harvard, on the Harlem Renaissance, that there were many gay people in the Harlem Renaissance. It should have been there. And that, to me, was and uh, I won't call it an inexcusable absence, but it was an obvious absence. But the to depict this curriculum as being this wholesale capitulation of the college board to the forces of the right, I don't think it's an accurate depiction of the curriculum. And I don't know how much of that curriculum was a result of the agenda of those who wrote it not because but it's not the like record. we don't know that it's not like we don't know the exchanges between uh DeSantis's um uh education department right. and the college I'm not, board I'm not because we're, 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 we're not talking because you know we're we're not, we're not talking about the whole curriculum we're talking about specific things that were taken out after 
there were complaints. That's the question. If any of us were to put together the curriculum, it wouldn't look like that. And it's not, it's not a defense of the curriculum, nor is it being dishonest. It is talking about specific areas that were just removed in response to emails between the Department of Education and the College Board. That's the issue. 